Tbilisi from uh, uh, Tbilisi, who will talk about Georgian verbal knowledge. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'm still Archil Izbarashvili, and I'm presenting joint work with Mireille Ducasse from in Saran, France, and uh, with Manana Khachitsa and Magda Tsintsate from Tbilisi State University, Georgia. Uh, so I'll present uh, about transformation process from structured textual data to semantic linked data for Georgian robot system. Uh, yeah, the plan is the following. So we'll start with the introduction, uh, talking about the objectives uh, with transformation process. After that, I will talk about the machine learning algorithm that we used for uh, filling the missing, occasional missing fields. And uh, uh, we will finish with perspectives and uh, conclusion. Yeah, Georgia. Georgia is located, its country is located into the Caucasus literary region. So there are many languages that are presented here. Uh, we have Indo European languages, we have uh, Afro Asiatic languages, we have Altaic languages, but Georgian language is none of them. Georgian language is a family of uh, Caucasian languages, in particular, Southern Caucasian languages, and this family is called Kartvelian languages. Actually, we Georgian call ourselves Kartvel, the others call us Georgian. So this is Kartvelian language, and in Kartvelian language family, we have four different languages. This is one. Las, Migrelian, and Georgian. And there is quite a big similarity between these four languages. For example, for, for the verb I waited it, in Swan it will be on ton, Migrelian doptoni, las ptoni, and in Georgian aptoni. It's quite similar. Georgian language is agglutinative and inflectional as well. So the verbs can contain many markers, time formats, affixes, suffixes, uh, and uh, that will change the meaning of the word. Uh, rather, con conjugation can modify both the beginning and the ending of the verbs. And here are some examples. For instance, for the verb to work, a it is present verb form one plural. So, v paradical at the beginning of the verb is to mark for the first person, and the t at the end is to mark the plural. In the future, it will be v mushawab. So, e I has been inserted after the V marker of the person and the step format ob, ob here was transferred into the, was changed and altered into the eb. Yeah, uh, so this is the project which is called Cartwork. So the main purpose of this project was to help foreigners to, have to, to learn Georgian languages. And as uh, Georgian languages has many different uh, uh, forms in inflection, in the verb inflection, it was hard for foreigners to find the equivalent meaning of the inflected verbs. So we should have the lemma for all these inflected verbs to find out the meaning of this Georgian verb. So uh, the first Cartwright version 2.0 project was introduced by Mireille Ducasse, uh, the article in Eurolex 2020. So it was proof of concept and the users uh, was quite, uh, uh, it was quite comfortable uh, environment for users to navigate into the, thanks to the uh, powerful navigation tool, which is called Sparklist. Actually, this is the screenshot of the Sparklist here. Where is the pointer? Yeah, here. And uh, it was a knowledge web, uh, knowledge base of the inflected verb of about 300 verbs. And it was simultaneously best. So there, there was, uh, there was uh, machine readable data. It was RDFs, actually. So in two years, in Euralex 2022, uh, we enlarged this database uh, with 17,000 verbs. And here we have already 80 millions of connection between the morphemes and some characteristics of the verbs. And uh, uh, this was done thanks to the Paul Moorer, who is, uh, will uh, uh, give us the access to the Quarino Georgian based section uh, verbs. And uh, uh, the, 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 the database, uh, becomes very bigger. And of course, as the database is big, it's important to have acceptable navigation and response times. And it was quite okay for users. But there was another issue. Uh, the validated force needed to be validated because in uh, the transformation process, so uh, we're not quite sure that it is correct uh, uh, from the point of view grammar, etc. So in this paper, we are presenting uh, the construction and transformation and improvement process of this enlarged base, and we pr we're proposing the validation alternatives. Yeah, so uh, the transformation process is the following. So we have initial data, 
uh, we should get RDF data and uh, we should process this data. So this process uh, comprised three different blocks. Block one that scrap information from Clarino. Block two that improve the raw data with several processes. And block three that transform CSV file to RDF data. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the slide uh, present the difference uh, between Clarino and Cartweb. Actually, the main difference is the aim. Clarino is aiming for linguists, rather, and uh, Cartweb is aiming for Georgian language learners, foreigners who want to learn Georgian language. Uh, Clarino information is condensed, and our information is uh, multiplicated into the lines. Uh, as you see here in Clarino, one line in our risk form, these, they, we have two alternatives. So, so these two alternatives went in two different lines. So we can see here that uh, the, this one per person, person one has went uh, to two di 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 different places. Oh, actually, the fonts are different. That's why the arrows is, are not flashing to the good places. Sorry. Vada miane uh, vada miane. This is our stance and uh, the verbal noun. The verbal noun in Clarino is not very explicit. So we should deduce with some forms, Mazdar, Mazdar, which is actually the merged version of preverb and the verbal noun. So we've got the preverb from the inflected verb itself. So Mazdar is, here is Gada Mianeva, the Gada Mianeva, which is where to humanize somebody. Another big difference between Clarino and uh, Cartwerps is that Clarino information is hierarchical, when while Cartwerp information is relation, relational uh, with a linked data. In Clarino, actually, the access key is root, so we have root. After then, we have verbs, and in Cartwerps, uh, the access keys it can be any characteristic. It can be uh, Proverb, it can be pronominal, it can be root, and etc. So all these characteristics are linked, like like this, uh, the logos or icons. So here we have the hierarchical structure, and here we have the relational structure. Um, the next uh, is the transformation process. So uh, we're taking the chlorine information. So we scrap it with our custom program, C++ program. We're getting one line JSON file. Uh, after, after that, we transform this one line JSON file into the pretty format. So we have 22 millions of lines with the 625 megabyte of size. And after that, with the custom Python, Python script, we are getting uh, the uh, CSV file with 3.3 gigabyte of size and about 6 million lines. And here we have for uh, one inflected verb form, we will have 64 different properties. That's too much. Yo, now, now uh, the construction process uh, actually is uh, important process is incremental. So uh, in Clarino information, uh, rather roots, can contain Latin uh, characters. Latin characters is not characteristic for Georgian characters, but this is done to, to, to sign some alternatives. For instance, I, I, here, it can be either E or A, like vid can be vid or vet. This is the example, avidet, so it means let's go up, and avedit, it means we went up, so two different verbs. So uh, it is the compact, uh, compact condensed uh, structure because of Clarino. Another verb is uh, that, uh, um, another characteristic is that the Clarino information can be divided into uh, with the typology. So here we deal the fields that are systematically present, but with some specific encoding. And here we deal the information uh, where there is fields with enough information, but there is not enough information, but we can deduce this information. For instance, we can deduce preverbs and masters. In Georgian, in general, we have more than 40 possible preverbs. And uh, mm, uh, as we mentioned already, in Clarino, uh, verb now, verbal noun is verbal noun is uh, the form that can be started with asterisk, meaning that which should merge with the preverb. So if here the preverb is gada and verbal noun is keteba, so the deduce master is gada keteba. But with other Preverbs, we can merge it with them and we can get gaketeba, it means to do, sheketeba, it means to repair, moketeba, it means to recover, and etc. 
here uh, we can see uh, how the CSV file is converted into the uh, n triple uh, format. So we can see here that Lada mainly goes into three lines. Here, tense, its meaning, person, its uh, value, number, its value, and etc. So now, now we'll talk about the machine learning algorithm uh, how that we use to, um, to miss some missing values, to fill some missing values. Uh, actually, uh, the verbal noise is very important for us because uh, to, to form the lemma, we should have preverb and verbal noun. But in Clarino, there are some lines. Actually, this is 600,000 lines that doesn't contain the verbal nouns. So we should fill this information. We should deduce this information. To deduce this information, we need a verbal noun. So we should have some machine learning algorithm to guess and predict what, is, what are the verbal nouns. So uh, to do that, uh, the conjunction is that uh, as Clarino information is hierarchical, uh, we have common roots and after verbs, we said. And uh, here is a figure that shows that, that 670, uh, one common root can lead uh, to, mm, sorry, 670 common roots can lead to only one verb. But if you can see the following, one common root can lead 153 verbs. So what, what does it mean? It means that in general, in average, we have one common rule that leads it to different and eight different verbs. So it means that missing value should be somewhere else in the base. So we should guess where it is and we should uh, get it. So it was, that was the conjecture. So before uh, create and uh, clean the input file, of course, we should get uh, this, uh, we should have this improvement process. So this improvement process comprises filtration of duplicated lines, so of empty lines, so lines with morphologically incorrect forms or all lines without verbal nouns, etc. So at the end, we've got the input file that is, uh, that contains 3.8 millions of lines and each containing, of course, the Georgian reflected form and uh, 14 different features. And uh, we used and we choose the decision tree algorithm. Why? Because decision tree algorithm is supervised and indeed our data is uh, present about uh, 80%. So we can uh, use supervised learning method algorithm. Second, it is multi-class classific classification and indeed our task is multi -class classification because we should, uh, we should select one form from 6,539 different forms. Decision tree model is non-parametric and indeed our model cannot be parametric because it contains very complex pattern. Decision tree has and possess very low complexity and it is crucial for us because our data is too much, very big. And uh, the last, this DT, decision tree algorithm is not influenced by missing values. It is really important for us because in our database, we have some features, some characteristic of inflected verbs that are missing. Missing, it's not the error. It is just uh, in some tenses where inflected verb miss some information, radical, proverb, and something like that. So here we can see the missing, missing ratio for ending, radical, proverb, state formant, and causative state formant. Yes. So now while uh, making this experiment, uh, of course, uh, first we should uh, transform the text into the numbers because machine, no one, machine learning algorithm can deal with the texts, neither English text, nor Georgian text, neither French text, etc. So we should do the conversion to the numbers. And uh, we used uh, uh, the custom encoding schema, custom encoding function. And uh, so we took uh, uh, UTF, uh, uh, UTF uh, schema, uh, Georgian uh, uh, characters, for Georgian characters. We took uh, the, the last byte of uh, UTF schema because uh, each character, Georgian character, is three bytes long. The first two is redundant. Uh, we counted the value of this uh, uh, value of this byte and we summed up for each word. So we got the numbers. Of course, we use for some uh, some for some categorical variable. We use some dummy algorithms and well-known algorithms to make vectorization, and we use the training and testing data with the ratio 80 percent and 20 percent. So, for the split, we made some randomization, sometimes with systematic, sometimes with different uh, C numbers that. Uh, 
gives us different uh, customizations, cus customized and randomized fleet. But with all approaches across every different runs, the scores are were the same. So here is the here is the uh, results. Yes, really, fonts are different here. That's why it is not well uh, presented here. So if you see here, the uh, well-known metrics precision recall an F1 score are one. This is a perfect, but uh, don't judge too early. Uh, this is because uh, because it is a multi-class uh, uh, classification task, and this is this one actually is the sum of individual tasks. And if we dive into the details, actually, we have some individual individual variable nouns. We have 80% is a prediction, 60% of prediction, 50% of prediction, and even 0% of prediction. 0% it means that there is no candidate in compare. This is zero shot. And this is the some explanation of, uh, of uh, uh, this uh, uh, split because here the blue boxes are training data and the rose boxes are the uh, test data and for the verb with VNs, V1, V2, and VI, here we don't have any training data. So here there is no candidacy, candidacy to compare. So that's why here we get the zero, zero percent or zero shot. So here our model is incapable to give some prediction. Of course, this is zero percent here. Uh, after the trained the model, we apply this model to, to the missing values and the missing value number was 600,000, and uh, uh, manual sampling showed, of course, some mistakes. This is not a perfect prediction, 100% prediction. And what does it mean? It means that either the conjecture has to be defined, or this is because of non objective encoding, because we use some encoding that is not objective. This is not objective because it can give some uh, numerical anagrams. Or maybe there's a uh, zero shot classification problem should be, or should be uh, resolved first. So here the conjecture is if a verb doesn't have a verbal noun and there exists another verb with the same common root, verbal noun can be deduced. So we should review all these criteria and uh, we developed uh, also the tools to facilitate uh, the validation results. Actually, uh, we got to, and we took some heuristics to reduce the number of results to be manually checked because we cannot check manually every 6,000, 600,000 of, uh, of uh, results. So one of the uh, heuristics to predict to the noun is questionable when it doesn't match the root of the form. If the root is not in the form, uh, this form is questionable. And uh, we're trying now, it, actually this is a parallel process, par parallel project. We're configuring the crowdsourcing platform Headwork, which was realized and created into the ERISA group in France, and we'd like to have uh, expertise of, uh, of the linguist, uh, linguist to tell us what is a exactly and uh, correct uh, master solution. So what about perspective and conclusion? So the perspective is that uh, we should refine uh, the processes and add some improvement tools. Uh, we apply, we should apply some maybe decision trees to other fields, occasional incorrect fields. And uh, would like to investigate Stefanovic's work where they did use some morphemes and maybe it will help us to compare our morphological structure. And we'd like to investigate BERT. Yes, indeed, BERT is a model language, but unfortunately it is not trained for the Georgian language. But it is trained for uh, many languages, so it's got my, um, and BERT, so BERT it contains it is trained, if I remember well, 100 on 104 languages, including Georgia. So we can do some experiments here. And so to conclude, the conclusion is that uh, we process the transformation process from textual structure data to the linked data for Georgian verbal system and knowledge. Uh, here we have a different target users and objective on two bases. Uh, we used decision tree algorithm that gives us approximately 100% of uh, prediction, but uh, the test of the test data, uh, we have some mistakes or the missing values. So we produce the scripts, it is the Python scripts that is publicly available. So 
anybody who would like to explore it or who would like to uh, adapt to other application, uh, into other data suited for different objectives. So feel free, so it's free, available, and you can download it. Uh, that's it, I uh, thank you, and I'm ready to ask uh, questions, if any. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think everything was very clear and precise, but I'm sure there are some comments or questions, maybe. I have one, but maybe this is something that I missed. But um, so the 600,000 uh, forms that you uh, have uh, missing verbal nouns, are mm -hmm. those um, all lemma forms? Or just so 600,000, to, to what does this uh, refer? Actually, we have 600,000 different inflected forms with different characteristics, but with no verbal noun. We need verbal noun to, to deduce the master because in many dictionaries, it is the master, which is the lemma. So to get meaning of these inflected verbs, we should deduce master. And as there, there are no verbal noun, we cannot do this master, and that's why we would like to apply this machine learning algorithm to predict. Yeah. Uh, maybe I missed that as well. Um, what are the ontologies and vocabularies you use for the linked data? Did Did you say? No. Like, did you use ontology? No, you didn't. So, what What are they? Uh, ontology. Yes. Or vocabularies like ontolex, so what are you using? To no, we are data? using actually Sparklist. Sparklist is a great, oh, that, okay. great tool. It was created into ERISA by Sebastian Ferrer. Actually, wh wh why it is a great tool? Because just I showed, the, I showed only the screenshot. It is a public site, website. So it is uh, good because here you, every user can specify endpoint. You can create your endpoint on your computer and you can explore with Sparkle data from your computer using this website. So that's why you should not transfer the data into server. Your data is on your laptop, on your computer. You're exploring with Sparkle using this application. Okay, thanks. I don't wear my glasses. That's what I, why I missed that. I yeah, actually, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so far, the ontology is flat. This just inflated forms, period. I mean, of course, I mean, there's future work not listed here that we add more structure. Like, that's why, I mean, all the forms have verbal noun is because actually we don't have verb as uh, an area. Right? So uh, at the moment, it's totally flat. And it's totally flat because actually uh, everything is a head word, head word sorry, as a matter of fact, I mean, any form, any component, even T is a, so, but it's future work. <laughs> yeah, just to complement about Sparkly, Sparkly was introduced in this article, in this article, so that's why we didn't add some slides to describe it. Well, if there are no more questions, then thank you once again. Thank you.